Hello everyone. This video is not a Let's Play. Uh, it's going to be a long video of me talking, so for those of you who want to see games and just want to see me playing things, uh, this video is probably not going to be very interesting for you. Uh, this is a video made for my fellow Let's Players, for other people who um, are making or, or want to make Let's Play videos and uh, are interested in um, some theory or some discussion about uh, about making them. Uh, so I've made videos in the past about how to make Let's Play videos, about the technicalities of doing so with Cam Studio. Uh, I mentioned in a recent video that I'm using Open Broadcaster software now, which seems to work pretty well. Um, I also made a video in the past about how to choose a game to Let's Play, in which my fundamental point was choose a game that you want to play. Uh, choose something that you actually enjoy. But in this video, uh, I wanted to have a little sort of discussion um, salon or forum or... Actually, it's not really a, a forum because it's just me talking, so it's going to be like a lecture. Um, this is probably going to go on for a long time. Uh, as everybody knows by now, I tend to be very wordy. I can talk about anything for a very long period of time, so this is going to be a lot of me talking. If you don't care, if you're not interested, then uh, this video is probably not for you. But if you're interested in some of the sort of um, theory behind making Let's Play videos, uh, today what I'm going to talk about is uh, decisions, like fundamental decisions and choices that you have to make when you're making a Let's Play or planning on making a Let's Play video or a series of videos. Um, the first decision, the first choice that you have to make when you're going to make a Let's Play, of course, uh, it, well, not necessarily the very first one, but um, usually one of, the one of the fundamental ones is should you do voice commentary? Uh, obviously in most of my videos that I make now, uh, there's my voice talking about the game, talking over the game and explaining what's going on and what I'm doing. Uh, those of you who have been watching me from the very beginning probably remember that, uh, my first video series, my first so-called Let's Play, was of Police Quest 3. And I didn't put any voice commentary in the, uh, in the videos because I wanted the game to stand for itself. That was just my mentality. I thought that it would be better for people to just see the game as it is and not for me to keep talking and blabbing over everything that's happening. Uh, what ended up happening is a lot of people complained and said this is not a Let's Play, it's a playthrough. So uh, I, I was kind of new to the scene back then. I wasn't really familiar with the terminology. Uh, it turns out that pretty much by definition, a so-called, quote, let's play, unquote, uh, pretty much has to have voice commentary. So uh, I want to emphasize, I really believe that there is a place for videos that do not have voice commentary, that are just uh, you playing through the game and showing how to play the game without any uh, of your voice in the video at all. Um, in fact, I used to prefer that. I still do prefer that for some situations because I think in a lot of cases it's it's better and it's more appropriate to see the game than to have somebody talking about the game. Uh, that's not the type of videos I usually make these days for various reasons, uh, partly based on feedback, because a lot of people seem to like my voice for some reason, which is kind of... Uh, Kind of funny, I don't really like my voice very... I do have a deep voice, but I think that my voice is also kind of nasal, and uh, frankly, I don't really... I mean, I don't think I have a terrible voice, but I don't think I have a very... Um, a voice that's very cool to listen to for long periods of time, but a lot of people have told me, no, we like your voice, so hey, uh, if, if you guys like my voice, I'm, I'm very grateful, I'm very glad. Um, but, you know, some people might have stage fright, they might be uh, uncomfortable with how their voice sounds, or you might just... Uh, you know, not not want to talk, just not want to put your voice in the video, and that's perfectly fine. If you if you want to make a, uh, a a video about a game and show yourself playing the game without any voice commentary, that's perfectly fine. Don't feel like you have to put your voice in the game, but if you do so, make sure that you call your videos a playthrough and not a let's play, because then people are going to complain and say this is not a let's play; it's a playthrough, which is what happened to me. Um, people have uh, been encouraging me to go back and redo Police Quest 3 with voice commentary. I may do that someday, but it's not a high priority for, for me right now because I think the game stands pretty well on its own. Um, a kind of a uh, sub, sub point to this is um, whether you should do solo commentary or a, uh, a group let's play. Um, 
lately all of my videos have been just me talking but of course in the past um i did a lot of videos with other people um and i get mixed feedback on this some people complain and say you know it if there are if there's more than one person in the video it sort of detracts from um from what's going on because now you have two people talking and it becomes more like dialogue instead of becoming more like let's talk about the game it's more like let's have two people uh just sort of engaging in some funny banter with each other and it kind of goes back and forth it becomes more about it becomes more like uh almost like a comedy routine between the two people rather than <clears throat> uh, a video about the game uh, I don't think that's necessarily true, but it certainly can be true. Uh, I think in a lot of cases, yes, when two people start playing a game, it becomes more about like them being a sort of a, um, you know, a comedy duo rather than, uh, than them playing the game. So it depends on what kind of game you're playing. Uh, if you're playing like a party game, obviously, if you're playing a, a multiplayer game where you have to have several people, then sure, let's, let's have several people, the more the merrier. If you're playing a game like... Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to use a reference from my old DOS days. Uh, some of you probably remember Scorched Earth, which is a kind of a tank artillery game which can have up to 10 players. And I think that game becomes more fun if you have several people playing at once. So sure, for a game like that, let's have lots of people and let's all just get together and have a blast and try to blow each other up. But if you're playing a more serious game, uh, typically like uh, an adventure game or a strategy game or something like that, um, it might be more appropriate to have one person commenting on it. It depends, of course, on the people and how well they interact together, how well they, um, how well they, uh, mesh together on video or on audio. Uh, so that's something to consider. It certainly can go well if you have several people, but it may also, uh, detract from the experience, uh, especially if there are more than two people. Two people can, you know, they say two's company, three's a crowd. That's also not necessarily true. Sometimes you can have even more than, you can have like a half dozen people and it can still be fun. But again, it depends on, uh, on the people and how well they interact with each other. Uh, the next thing which I'm going to, uh, talk about is, uh, cutting out parts of the um of the game um so one thing that uh, has come up again and again in the let's play community is uh should you play role-playing games i'm going to especially highlight here RPGs or role-playing games. RPGs, as most of you know, involve a lot of repetition. There is a lot of grinding. Um, in fact, I'm going to add as a secondary point here, uh, grinding, because it's really... The point is not that there's anything wrong with RPGs specifically, but the point is that there's a problem with any game that involves a lot of grinding, uh, which for those who don't know means doing the same thing over and over again to build up your character, whether it's to collect money, Maybe you need a certain amount of money, and so you have to do some task or some job lots of times to get more money. Or you need to build up your character's strength or some other kind of abilities, and so you have to fight lots of monsters. Typically, in most RPGs, what you have to do is you have to fight lots of monsters again and again and again to build up your character's uh, fighting abilities. And uh, that gets really tedious to watch. And there have been many people in the past who have said, as a, as a rule, like as a very specific rule, RPGs don't make good Let's Plays. Uh, there are exceptions, uh, but, uh, you know, in general, again, it, it becomes a judgment call. It depends on what you really want to do, what kind of a game it is, what kind of a video you're making. Um, I have not made any videos of RPGs because I don't think that they would be very interesting to watch, quite frankly, but of course there can be exceptions. Uh, subsequent to that, I'm going to add as, as a more general point, repetition in general. Um, this does not apply so much for the types of games that I usually play because I mostly seem to play adventure games and there's usually not a lot of grinding or repetition in them. But of course, not everybody plays adventure games. In fact, I would say a majority of Let's Players are probably not going to be doing adventure games. Most people are playing some kind of um, action games or something like that. Um, so, in action games, a lot of the time what ends up happening is you have to try the same segment over and over again because you fail. Uh, those, those of you who have been in the scene for a while remember I Want to Be the Guy and how popular that was for a while. It seemed like, um, 
there was this period of time where everybody wanted to play I want to be the guy and wanted to make a, a let's play of them going through the game uh, because it's so hard. It's, it's a very difficult game and I actually uh, do like the game in the sense that it's 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 a very clever game. It's a very smart sort of creative game in finding clever and original ways to kill you uh, and to unexpectedly kill you, to kind of kill you uh, in, when you least expect it. And that's cool. That's, that's very interesting uh, at first because it's like, wow, you know, I really wasn't expecting that. That's actually a very clever way to uh, surprise the player. And that's part of the appeal of the game. It's, it's very clever in the way it does that. But um, the problem is that you have to, once you figure out how you die and what happens, you typically have to do one segment over and over and over again. If you ever play I Want to Be the Guy, you will die literally hundreds of times before you finish the game because it's just, it's that deadly. And, you know, that that's fun for some people um, to play, but keep in mind that what's fun to play is not always fun to watch. Um, Speaking for myself personally, I've said in the past, I don't really get much of a sense of accomplishment out of that kind of thing. Um, of course, sometimes if you do something that's challenging in a game, if you do something that you didn't really, um, you know, that wasn't easy and you had to try several times to do it, then yeah, you can qu kind of get the sense of, oh, I, um, I, I did something, uh, you know, I achieved something that was difficult to do because of my skill or persistence or luck or whatever, I managed to finally get through this really hard part of the game. And yeah, you can kind of feel that you've accomplished something about that. But um, uh, you reach a point where it feels like a waste of time. Uh, going back to I Want to Be the Guy, so one of the most famous people who played that game was Ultra J-Man. Uh, Ultra J-Man uh, was, I think, one of the first people to put up a playthrough, uh, not just a playthrough, but a Let's Play If I Want to Be the Guy. And he later followed that up with uh, a game called I Want to Be the Fan Game, which is even harder than uh, the original I Want to Be the Guy that it's uh, kind of parodying or being a fan game of. And I remember one point in uh, J-Man's playthrough of I Want to Be the Fan Game where he finally finished one screen and he said, you know what, I was here for two hours. I had In all of I Want to Be the Guy, I had never seen a segment that was that hard. I mean, yeah, in some parts of I Want to Be the Guy, I was stuck there for like half an hour or maybe even more, but that's, you know, that's a couple of videos, and after two or three videos, I finally made it through. Uh, and that's something I want to emphasize. If you're playing a game like that, if you're playing a very difficult game where um, you do have to do something over and over again, uh, for a game like that, actually, a lot of the appeal, a big part of the appeal in watching somebody play a very difficult game is in watching them die over and over. So in Ultra J-Man's case, a lot of people liked watching him play I Want to Be the Guy because you got to see just how difficult it was, how frustrated he got, how much he had to keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying to get through these really difficult parts. So if you're doing that, if you're, um, if you're playing a game where the whole point of the game is that it's really difficult and you have to keep trying, then there's a place for that. Then, um, I keep using the example of I Want to Be the Guy because it's one of the more famous examples, and I think it's an example that um, most of us remember if, we, um, if we've been in the Let's Play scene for a while. But, you know, going back to Ultra J-Man and his playthrough of the original game, he did include all of his deaths. He didn't cut, as far as I know, he didn't cut anything out. And that, I think, was appropriate to do because that was part of why people watched. People were watching to see just how hard it was and how upset he got. That was kind of the fun. I mean, it, you know, we'll, we'll admit it as viewers, it was kind of fun to watch him get really upset and start swearing and cursing and, and getting really frustrated by the game. That was a, a, a sort of fun. But once you start getting to the point where you're spending literally hours on one screen, uh, you're reaching the point where there's just not much more you can say. It's it's no longer fun and entertaining to watch him die over and over. Um, it's it's beyond frustrating. It's no longer frustrating at that point. At that point, it's more just like this this horrible sort of monotonous uh, rote process. And um, in that particular section, Ultra J Man did cut out a lot of that screen. He, when he said, uh, "You know, I've been unstuck on the screen for two hours. I'm going to cut out most of my deaths." Um, 
I think he made the right decision in doing so because nobody, well, maybe somebody does, but most people don't want to watch one guy just failing and dying on one screen again and again and again for two hours. I don't think that's fun. So, so repetition in general can be interesting, can be appropriate if you're trying to emphasize and you're trying to show everyone just how repetitive the game is and just what's involved in playing the game. But if you just want to show what's in the game and want to cut out a lot of the repetition, then that's very appropriate to do. So again, it depends on what kind of game you're playing and what kind of video you're making, what kind of um, uh, what you want to portray about the game. And on that note, I want to add a third point here. I'll just call it uh, artistic license. If you're a movie director, I mean, I, I don't think most of you are movie directors, but if you ever are, uh, you know, directing a movie, uh, there's a, uh, you know, there's a part of making a movie called post-production, which is basically when all the filming has been done, um, but now you're putting together the different clips and the different parts of the film to, um, to make the final cohesive film, because you have all these takes, all these different cuts of film, now you have to decide how to put them together, what you're going to put in and what you're going to leave out. So a big part of editing anything is deciding what you're going to put into a video or a movie or whatever, and what you're going to cut out. Uh, I don't usually cut stuff out of my videos because, again, I play adventure games and there's usually not too much that needs to be cut out there. I want the uh, the videos to be sort of a, a cohesive whole. But um, I want to emphasize, when you're making a Let's Play, it is your video. You're the one who's not only doing all the recording and all the talking and all the playing. Uh, when you're done, you're also the one doing all the editing, if in fact you do edit your videos. Not all videos need editing, but if you do edit them, then you're also the one doing the editing, and so it's up to you to decide what you put in and what you cut out. Some people are going to complain, and some people are going to say, well, you made the right decision. This is how it works with any any kind of artistic endeavor, any sort of creative endeavor. Whenever you create anything, some people are going to complain and say, you know, I, I wish that you hadn't done that. Other people are going to say, I'm really glad you did that. I think you made the right choice. So that's something you have to be ready for. So in terms of artistic license, in terms of cutting things out, um, there are, I tried to think of instances in my videos where I've cut something out. And one thing that came to mind was, again, going back to Police Quest 3, I removed the scene in the um, shopping mall uh, parking lot where uh, the protagonist's wife gets, uh, gets assaulted. And actually, is she his wife or his fiance? I don't even remember if they're... I, I know they live together. Uh, I think they're married, or maybe she's just a fiance. I don't remember. It, anyway, it doesn't matter. Her name is Marie. Let's just say Marie. So there's a scene in that game early on where Marie gets assaulted by two guys in a, uh, a parking lot. <clears throat> and uh, I cut it out because I didn't really like it. I didn't... Um, I don't know. I, th I thought it was kind of creepy. I mean, you have to understand, I played the game when I was like 10 years old, and that scene really creeped me out. Uh, going back and looking at it now, it's not that scary. It's certainly not as scary as some of what you'd see on on primetime television today. I mean, it's not like a really gruesomely horrifying scene, but I just didn't like it. I thought that it was um, a little bit disturbing, a little bit creepy, um, and it didn't really add anything to the game. And In retrospect, um, I guess it doesn't really make clear what happened because it's that's basically a, a key plot point in the game that's where you know this woman gets assaulted and you're supposed to know that she was attacked but I didn't really show that so maybe it wasn't clear but um, I made the decision to cut that part out to basically skip through that scene and not show it in my video because I didn't want to uh, some people complained about that some people said that that wasn't appropriate some people said why did you remove this part from the game because it, it is a cut scene in the game um, Maybe I made the wrong decision. I don't know. I, I still feel like I made the right decision. I don't regret cutting it out, but I understand that it, it was a vi you know a video. It was a cutscene in the game that I omitted for my own personal uh, decisions, at, or as a consequence of my own personal decisions. And some people criticized me for that, and some people said, "Well, you know, it's it's your thing. It's it's your video. You decide what to do." So, um, so that's one example. Uh, another example of where I basically skipped through something was. Um, um, punny bones. So most of you have probably seen my Let's Play of Quest for Glory 4, and uh, when we were doing Quest for Glory 4, we read almost everything. I think we diligently read nearly every, um, nearly every line in the game. Um, but there was something where, um, 
There was one part where Punny Bones, the sort of comedian, does a comedy routine, and I just skipped through that. I didn't read it uh, out loud. I just kind of clicked through his uh, his dialogue windows without uh, without reading them aloud because I just didn't want to. I just did, I thought that it would be pretty tedious. Um, and I don't like Punny Bones. I, I got to be honest. I just I find him incredibly annoying. And especially if you're doing like it was a, it was a stand up comedy routine. And if you're doing stand up comedy, um, those of you who have studied stand up comedy know critical, like absolutely integral elements to stand up comedy are timing and delivery and things like that. And the you know the whole act will bomb. I mean, you can write funny jokes, but the whole thing will just completely bomb if you don't have the right timing. And so if you're annoyed, if you're not in a good mood, if you're just not into it, if you're if you're not in the zone, so to speak, uh, your comedy act is not going to be funny. And so I thought, you know, I find this guy incredibly annoying. I don't even think his, jo his jokes are that funny. It's not going to be funny if I read his com if I try to do a stand-up comedy routine. I'm just going to skip through it. So that was a, um, a choice that I made, and I don't regret it too much, even though I'm sure some people thought, hey, his, his jokes were funny. I wish he had read his jokes. Um, another minor example of something that I cut out was the... Um, Actually, I didn't cut it out. I just didn't show it. Uh, I didn't uh, show the Easter egg that uh, that reveals it. In Quest for Glory 2, there's a scene where you can see a nude woman. Um, if, if you... Um, what's her name? Z Z Zayesha, I think, or something like that. Zayesha. Uh, when she's changing her clothes, uh, there is an Easter egg where you can actually see um, her actual nude body. And it's, it's very pixelated nudity. It's not like... Uh, it's certainly not close enough and not in high resolution enough to really be considered I wouldn't consider it pornographic but um, but you know it, it is something which um, I was I wasn't so much worried about people being offended about it I was just worried that YouTube might uh, might flag the video for containing nudity and actually I, I doubt that that would happen because it's really not explicit enough or uh, or graphic enough to really or something like that, but I just thought, you know, I'll just go ahead and not show that just to be on the safe side, because uh, I wasn't really, I don't think that anybody would really be offended by it, because it's its so pixelated and it's so small, but uh, I chose to cut that out, and that was my decision, and some people might not like that, and, you know, I'm, I'm not offended by it or anything like that, I just thought that it might be better to not include it for, uh, for whatever reason. That was my decision, and it was, again, some some license, some artistic license that I took with the game. Um, as a sort of a sub-point to this, in terms of cutting out things and you know, like just generally not including things in your Let's Play, uh, another point I want to bring up is, should you uh, read all the text aloud? Um, most of you probably know um, Yahtzee, uh, not not the game Yahtzee. If, I don't mean like the board game Yahtzee. I mean um, Ben Croshaw. Uh, his his real name is Ben Croshaw. He calls himself Yahtzee as his sort of online handle, um, or Yahtzee Croshaw, as he calls himself, because you know British people can't speak proper English. Um, so he, I'm I'm joking, by the way. I I know that English comes from England, so please don't send me hundreds of angry messages saying, I don't know what I'm talking about yet. Yes, I know that English is from England, and he is an Englishman. I'm just making a joke. Um, but anyway, uh, so Yahtzee has his own YouTube channel. I think it's called Yahtzee19, Yahtzee19. And he, some time ago, he started making uh, his own set of Let's Play videos. And um, I thought it was very interesting. Um, most of you are probably familiar with him because he's, uh, today he's mostly known for Zero Punctuation, his, uh, his series of uh, video game reviews. Uh, also, a lot of you folks in particular who watch my videos probably know him as the guy who made the, um, the Trilby games, or the also called the Ch Chizo Mythos games, um, which are, uh, I sometimes don't remember the exact structure of the naming. I think the first one is Five Days a Stranger, then there's Seven Days a Skeptic, there's Trilby Notes, and then there's Six Days of Sacrifice. I think I, think I got that ordering right. But anyway, he's the guy who made the, the Trilby games, um, as well as lots of other games. He's also got a Zero Punctuation. He's also... Um, I mean, he's known for a bunch of things. He's, he's a very multi-talented individual, and so those of you who are familiar with the gaming scene probably know who I'm talking about. 
Uh, but anyway, he's so he does Let's Plays on the side. It's not a very serious thing, but just is kind of a just for fun thing. And it was very interesting. In one video, I forget which one, but there was some video in which um, he noted reading all the text aloud on the screen is the sign of a bad Let's Play. Um, and I got to be honest, I don't I don't really agree with him. Uh, and I think that there are a lot of people who disagree because um, what I find it very what I find very irritating is when uh, somebody just skips through a lot of text without reading it. Um, because especially when you're playing an adventure game, the point is, for me at least, the point is to experience everything and to kind of explore everything and enjoy everything, and not just to skip through everything and just click, 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 just try to get through the to the end of the game as quickly as possible. That's not what it's about for me. It's not for me. It's not about finishing the game. Uh, you know, an adventure is about the journey, not the destination. At least I think for for most people it uh, it should be. Um, and that's just my own personal values. Uh, you know, whenever you say that something should be a certain way, that doesn't necessarily mean that it really has to be that way. That just means that, in your opinion, in your system of values, you believe that it should be that way. So if you really just want to play through the game, if you just want to get through the game and just show off the game and not, uh, not dwell on anything too long, then you can just skip through everything. But in most of my videos... Um, I have been pretty diligent about reading all the text on the uh, on the screen, unless it's something really superfluous. There are some adventure games that get really wordy in describing something that doesn't need to be described. So if you're playing an adventure game with a lot of superfluous text like, oh, the sun is shining and there are trees around and you can hear the birds chirping and it's a beautiful day and there's this and that... Um, you know, I, I find that kind of uh, superfluous, uh, even in a novel, even in, like, when I'm reading um, a literary novel, I usually find that stuff annoying because I don't need to hear about how the, uh, oh, this, uh, you know, it's it's like this and like that, and there's this mood, and some people enjoy that. Um, it, it's certainly appropriate if you're trying to set a certain mood, but I think sometimes some writers go overboard with it, so in a game, in an adventure game, it's usually kind of not key to the the flow of the game, and so don't feel like you have to read every single word aloud. Don't feel like you have to rigidly and meticulously read every single word that shows up on the screen, but I usually, um, I think I speak for most viewers when I say that I don't really like the opposite, where you just skip through everything and don't read anything and just assume that people can and will read for themselves what's on the screen. So I don't I don't agree with the Otzi when he says that... Um, it's it's a sign of a bad let's play if you read all the text. I think that it's quite the opposite. Generally speaking, you want to uh, you want to kind of capture everything that's there. And if you're just skipping through everything, then it's not much fun. Unless that's really what you want to do. If that's really what you want to do, then okay. But I think for the most part, that's not um, not really what gaming is about. It's not about it's not about just finishing. At least for me, it's it's not about getting it done because gaming's not a job. It's not a uh, it's not like some task that you're getting paid for. It's something that. Uh, you know, that you want to have fun with, you want to enjoy it, you want to experience it. So so try to avoid skipping stuff unless that's what you really want to do, or unless it's just really not interesting. Like, again, going back to stuff like Punny Bones or things like that, where you just really think that this is getting tedious and it would be better to jump through it. That's one thing, but don't feel like you have to just charge through the game like a bulldozer and get to the end as quickly as possible. Um, a special point here, a very special uh, sort of thing that I want to um, dwell on for a moment is if the game has its own voice acting, should you do your own voices? Um, obviously, this doesn't apply to all games, uh, especially early adventure games, the original you know, King's Quest and Space Quest and Monkey Island games and things like that. They didn't have voice acting because computers didn't have sophisticated enough audio systems to do voice acting back then. But if you're doing a, a more recent game, um, most games today have voice acting. And I say this very especially because, uh, again, going back to Quest for Glory 4, those of you who have watched my Let's Play of Quest for Glory 4, you remember that Her Crabbiness and I did our own voices for the game. And I got a lot of complaints. I got so many messages, so many comments on the videos saying, Oh no, why did you guys do your own voices, because the the original voice acting for this game was so good. They had some real uh, 
professional actors that they brought in to do the voices for this game, and their voices were so good. I really, uh, I really, really miss uh, Jonathan Rhys Davies, or whatever his name was, as the narrator, and all those people. Oh, the voice acting was so good. I really wish that you guys had included the uh, the original voice acting from the game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to hear the original voice acting for the games, play the games yourselves. The reason why... Okay, I'm going to back up. That's that's Again, this is not absolutely true. Certainly, if you don't want to do your own voice acting in a Let's Play, you don't have to. If you'd rather show off the, um, the voice acting that's available in the game, then you can. But in Quest for Glory 4... Um, I really thought that her crabbiness and I did a great job of voicing the characters. I think that I'm, I think that my voice acting was pretty good. I received some particularly good feedback on my voicing of the Burgomeister, which is, is very deep voice. He has a, a very, actually, I don't even know what his, what his voice was like in the original game because, uh, I didn't play the game with the audio, but, but I know that, uh, I did, I did him with a very sort of stereotypical Russian voice and, and a lot of people like that. And her crabbiness did such a great job with some of the characters, especially Tanya. If you remember Tanya, the uh, little girl whom you have to rescue, my gosh, her crabbiness did such a magnificent, she did such a perfect voice for that character. She did this voice that was all at once incredibly creepy and yet still very cute, which matches Tanya as a character very well because she is this really creepy little girl and yet she is a very cute little girl. And it was just brilliant the way that her crabbiness did that, and that's something that um, that I'm very, I'm I'm very proud of the work that we did for that game. I'm very proud of how we voiced that game, even though the game, d the CD-ROM version of the game, of course, does have an option for its own voice acting, its own audio, uh, and so we could have just opted to go with that and not done our own voices for the game. Um, so I don't regret at all. I, I, for one moment, I don't regret for one moment that we actually did our own voice acting. I think we did a great job in that game, um, and I'm very proud of the work that we did. But, um, if you're playing a game that has voice acting, or, you know, has at least the option for voice acting, um, you're, be aware, you're going to get a lot of complaints because people are going to say, oh, the voice acting was so good, I really wish that you hadn't done your own voices. I really miss the, the audio from the game. So, um, most games today don't even have the option. Most games today uh, just, just have voice acting, and there's not even an option to turn it off. So, in that case, yeah, you pretty much have to have the voice acting from the game, unless you want to talk over it. You can talk over it and, and like, you know, talk on top of the game's voice actors. Um, that's, that gets a little bit more dicey. Um, I'll leave that decision up to you folks. Again, it's, it's your video, it's your let's play. You do what you want. It's, you know, it's, it is sort of a artistic slash creative endeavor. And so you get to make your own decisions and do what you want. Uh, but of course, keep in mind, other people are going to see the video, and other people are going to have their own impressions and their own opinions, and there are certain expectations that other people will have of you. Uh, but if it's optional, if the voice acting is optional, uh, in my case, I would rather do my own voices. And like I said, I do not regret at all doing that for Quest for Glory 4. I, am, I really think that um, her crabbiness has a brilliant voice for certain types of characters, and I think also my voice works well for certain types of characters, and I think that that went well. So don't be afraid to do your own voices, um, but be prepared to um, take some criticism for that, because everybody's a critic, you know. It's, it's like they say, everybody's a critic, and this is sort of... If you're making Let's Plays, you're exposing yourself. You are putting yourself out into the public in a way that kind of um, opens you up to public criticism. And if you don't like that, then you probably shouldn't be making videos. I, I remember when, um, going off on a little bit of a tangent, but uh, I might as well since I've already been talking for a while. Remember the whole YouTube comments thing last year? Um, I think it was last year. It was, it was recently, like it was about six months ago or something like that, where YouTube comments got really weird and Google wanted you to start posting with your real name. And the reason for that was because um, a lot of YouTube comments are terrible. A lot of YouTube comments are... Uh, really abusive or, you know, they can be very um, racist or, or otherwise hateful or, um, or sometimes just frankly stupid, like just really unbelievably stupid. 
uh, you know, quite frankly speaking. And uh, I think they thought that people being able to post with their real names or forcing people to post with their real names instead of being able to post with an alias, like a, a handle, might encourage people to be a little bit more sensible in their comments. Um, and my view on that is, yeah, a lot of YouTube comments are stupid. I mean, yes, it's true. Uh, I don't know. A lot of YouTube comments are really, really abusive or hurtful or just dumb, but that's the nature of a public forum that's you know if you put up a video on youtube you're opening yourself up to criticism because that's the you know it's public opinion that's freedom of speech right and if you can't handle that if you don't want to deal with people saying things which may be dumb or maybe stupid or angry or abusive or hurtful um you, you know you, you might not be ready to open yourself up to the public that way because whenever you create something whatever it is whether it's a video or a work of art or like you know like a painting or writing something or some kind of music or something there are going to be critics people are not gonna not everybody's gonna like what you do and you have to be ready for that you have to be willing and prepared to receive negative feedback negative criticism it's just it's something that's going to happen and I don't like it either but I don't think that it's something that we need to eliminate because it's again it's freedom of speech people have the right to say that people have the right to say well you're stupid or your videos suck because that's sure it's their opinion why not and then they can say what they want so there's my little rant about that um another very important this is a very significant question which uh which comes up regularly when making let's plays is uh should you do live commentary or post commentary i don't know if they're supposed to be. i'm putting a hyphen there but i don't i guess you can spell it without a hyphen as well eh, for some reason i feel like it works better with a hyphen but maybe i'm wrong so uh what i'm asking here is um when you're uh, if you're putting voice commentary in as, as you may eventually um should you comment on the game while you're playing which is live commentary you're doing your uh, stream of commentary as you're playing the game, or alternatively post commentary, which means you film yourself or record yourself playing the game first, then afterwards you overdub your voice commentaring on the play uh, on the playing of the game. Um, my general opinion, and I think most people would agree with me on this, generally speaking, live commentary is better um because it's more you're more in the zone that way if you're doing live commentary you're actually commenting as you're playing and um it just feels more lively it feels more vivid because you're actually experiencing the game as you play it post commentary you already know what's going to happen so there are no surprises it's kind of like oh yeah here i did this and then i did that and then i you know it went here went there and it's just not as interesting. It's not as lively. It removes a lot from the experience. Um, and like I said, it, it eliminates surprises because you're not surprised. But you, you can act surprised. You can pretend to be surprised, but it's really not the same thing. Uh, another good example of this, uh, I'm going to invoke her crabbiness again. Those of you who've been watching us from the very beginning, uh, you've probably seen her crabbiness's very first Let's Play, which was of the Colonel's Bequest. And the one scene, of course, that everybody remembers from, uh, from her Let's Play of that was where she got really freaked out when a dead body appears in a well. She was pulling up the, um, <clears throat> uh, the bucket in the well, and even though she had played the game before, she hadn't expected a dead body to be there. And when it showed up, she got really freaked out. And uh, it was funny for people because it was so surprising. She was just like, whoa! And that is obviously something that you wouldn't get from post commentary that kind of surprise th that that kind of thing appeals to people because in that moment you're there you as the let's player you're right there with your audience or maybe vice versa the audience is right there with you we're all there with you as a let's player and we're all saying wow that was unexpected i was surprised about that and if the let's player is not on the same page and they're just like oh yeah and here i uh here I uh, looked in the well and there was a dead body and wow, I was really surprised. It, it's, it really loses something. It's the difference, it's like a night and day difference. It's a life and death difference. It really can kill, um, it, it can really kill all the energy from the Let's Play 
if you do post commentary. Um, again, there are exceptions. Uh, again, going back to repetition, uh, and again, going back to I want to be the guy, I remember what a lot of people did was, um, because the game is so repetitive and you have to do so many parts of it so many times, um, some people ended up doing post-commentary for, the, for their Let's Plays of that game because they wanted to cut out most of their deaths, they wanted to cut out most of the uh, unnecessary parts, and what you end up with then is a string of very disconnected segments, which wouldn't have made much sense if there had been live commentary. So if you just want to show yourself playing through a game, and it's not about it's not so much about the experience of the game, it's more about the act of completing the game, then you can do post-commentary, because then it's more like a, a post-mortem, or like a, not, not exactly a post-mortem, but like an analysis of the act of playing the game. You're saying, okay, at this point I did this, here I did that, and then it's more like a lecture. It's not so much like a, a let's play, it's more like a, a lecture on, here's exactly how to play the game, and here's what I did, and what you can do too. There is a place for that, um, but be aware, if you're, if you're trying to get across the energy and the fun of playing the game, you're going to lose most of that in post-commentary. It's just not going to be much fun uh, in post-commentary. It's going to be very dry, and it's going to be very sterilized and kind of uh, uh, a neutered uh, experience, if you will. So, so there's that. Um, a couple more things. Uh, I do want to talk about completionism, uh, which is basically the question of whether you should uh, try to fully, like uh, some people say, 100% the game, meaning to get 100% of all the available points and um, bonuses or whatever in the game, versus uh, kind of just sticking to the meat of the game, the main parts of the game. Um, Again, this really depends. This is really something that depends on what game you're playing, what kind of game it is, and what kind of video you want to make. Uh, completionism can get very tedious if, um, I don't know, a, an example is if you're playing Super Mario Brothers and you're trying to collect every single coin in the game. Now, uh, of course, in Super Mario Brothers, there are lots of coins that are hidden in hard-to-reach places. You kind of have to do some funny trick to get there, and there's really not much point in doing so other than just to collect one or two or three spare little coins that might have been tucked away somewhere. Uh, if you're doing that, it's typically... For a game like that, I want to say it's usually not very much fun to play or to watch. Um, an exception is if that's the point, if the whole point, the whole focus of the video is very explicitly how to 100% Super Mario Brothers, then yes, then you, of course, you'll have to show off everything because you want to show how to pick up every single coin in the game, every single power-up or bonus or whatever, if that's the point, because some people are into that, some people want to see... You know, some people have OCD. I mean, I, I'm kind of OCD myself. I tend to want to, you know, do everything as much as possible, as as perfectly or as well as possible, um, because I'm kind of OCD that way. But even I have a certain point where I just think, you know, if there's if there are hundreds of coins in the game, and there's like this one spot where there's one or two of them and they have no special significance, it's really there's really not much point in getting them. There's, it's really not much fun to meticulously try to grab every single thing that you can get, unless it's um, unless that's really where you want the focus to be. So contrary to that, as a sort of a counterpoint to that, um, I'm going to pick on one of my friends, Crowley9, uh, who a while ago did a Let's Play of one of his favorite games, which is Thief the Dark Project. And he did pretty much uh, exactly that. He made special effort to collect every item, even if it wasn't needed, because he hardly used anything. Uh, like, there are lots of um, little goodies like fire arrows and water arrows and things like that that you can pick up in that game, uh, which he didn't even use. In fact, he tried to, as much as possible, not use any of those items in the game, but he still picked them up just to show off how you can get them. And for for his videos, for his style of play, that was all right, because that's how he plays those games. Thief is not a, um, I mean, Thief's not a very fast-paced game in the first place. It's a very slow, um, slow-paced kind of game most of the time. It involves a lot of planning, a lot of very careful and meticulous planning. It's not a game like Super Mario Brothers that you just kind of blast through and, you know, you have some time limit, you try to get to the finish line uh, fairly quickly. Thief is the kind of game that you play slowly and meticulously and carefully, so... 
for a game like that, and for a guy like Crowley 9, because that's his play style, uh, that kind of thing works. So if you are that kind of particular person, and if you're playing that kind of a game, which lends itself well to completionism and picking up every single power-up, every little tiny thing that you can find, even if you're not going to use it, then sure, why not? But if the point of the game is to kind of, uh, you know, have fun and not take it too seriously and kind of get through with some reasonable amount of speed, then you're kind of killing the flow of the game if you break off every few seconds to collect some other little little power-up that you have to go through some effort to get. So completionism is... Um, it really depends on the game. Does the game lend itself well to that or not? Is it the kind of game where you will feel rewarded and viewers will feel rewarded by making the special effort to get everything that you can get? Or is it just going to look like you have some really ridiculous OCD problem if you keep trying to pick out every little tiny little detail, um, which can ultimately detract from the flow of the game and the game's gameplay or narrative? So. Uh, uh, speaking for myself, as uh, somebody who specializes in adventure games, and those of you who also specialize in adventure games, a special sub-point to that is uh, points. In most Sierra adventures, there is a point system whereby you can get uh, specific points for solving particular puzzles, and um, m I think most people, myself included, who play adventure games want to get the maximum score because you feel like you miss something if you finish the game and you're missing you know a few points even if it's just a few points if it's just like one or two points then you're going to say well what did i miss i thought i got pretty much everything so where did i miss these one or two points and um for that kind of a game i usually uh, want to get the maximum score possible and show off all the ways that you can get points in the game. Because again, an adventure game is not the kind of game that you hurry through. There's a lot of thought and a lot of you know consideration involved in playing that kind of game. Uh, and so I think that it's appropriate to try and get all the points possible. But then there are other people who don't care, and other people just say, you know, I just want to experience the story of the game, and I really don't care if I missed one or two points for some minor unnecessary action, because really it's not important. So... It, it depends on the game, it depends on you and your personal style, um, but be aware that um, if you're focusing too much on uh, on trying to collect everything, it, it can reach the point where it detracts from the game if, you're, uh, if the game is not about trying to get everything. So it really depends on the kind of game that you're playing. Um, the last point that I want to bring up is something that's only sort of become... Um, an issue. I don't know if I should call it an issue, but a, a like a a point of discussion. It, I think it's only relatively recently become something that people are uh, really talking about. It's should you show yourself on camera? Um, those of you who are kind of keeping up with YouTube and what's going on on YouTube and sort of the the scene, if in fact there could be said to be such a, a scene is um, one thing that's happening is a lot of people are now showing themselves in a sort of a little picture in the corner. There's like a picture-in-picture -picture, um, webcam or face cam of the person playing the game. Um, and I'll go ahead and... I might be dating myself a little bit because um, this won't necessarily be the case in a few years, but I'll go ahead and date this video and say that right now, as, as I'm making this video, uh, the most subscribed YouTuber is PewDiePie. Uh, PewDiePie has, I think right now, something like 25 or 26 million subscribers, which is obviously a lot of subscribers. Um, that might not be the case in a few years, because I remember a few years ago, the first YouTuber to hit 1 million subscribers was Fred. Remember Fred? Hey, it's Fred! Uh, and it was a big deal when Fred hit 1 million subscribers, but people don't really talk about Fred anymore. I don't think he's making videos anymore. And right now, PewDiePie is on top. But in another five years, people might have forgotten about PewDiePie. Who knows? But anyway, PewDiePie is a guy who plays uh, games. That is his thing. He's a um, not exactly a Let's Player, although he does some Let's Plays, but mostly he seems to just do uh, videos of him having fun with games. And in most of his videos, there is a little webcam, or maybe not a webcam, but like, like a, a camera of his face as he's playing the game in the corner. And this has become a trend. It's not only uh, not only him, a lot of other people are also doing this. 
um, because it seems to be sort of popular right now. Uh, a few years ago, if somebody had asked me this, if somebody had asked me, should I show myself on camera as I'm playing, my response would have been, no, absolutely not. Uh, I would have been pretty unequivocal about that. No, that's not, uh, no, not, uh, not something that should be part of a Let's Play. But um, in light of what's been happening recently, uh, I realized that, once again, there can be a place for that. Uh, the problem, of course, with this kind of thing, if you're, uh, if you're doing this, if you're showing yourself on camera, is it can distract from the game. Um, and a lot of people will say that you're drawing attention to yourself, um, particularly if you're... Um, well, it goes both ways. So if you're good-looking, um, people will accuse you of trying to sort of... Uh, you know, people will call you a cam whore, whether you're male or female. And people will say that you're trying to, uh, you know, draw attention to yourself because of that. Uh, and if you're not particularly, you know, if, if you're not classically good looking, then you're going to get a lot of hateful comments, a lot of people saying that you're not very attractive. Um, and that can be very hurtful and very insulting as well. But if you are good looking, if you are sort of traditionally or, uh, you know, um, normally, shall I say, or, you know, if you fit the mainstream definition of somebody who's handsome or uh, or beautiful or attractive, then people are going to say, oh, you're just trying to draw attention to yourself, you're making it more about you than the game, you just want people to look at you, and and you're kind of narcissistic and all that. Um, so either way, it just sort of seems like a lose-lose situation to me. But there are a lot of people doing this now. now it's not only PewDiePie, uh, there's also Tobuscus. Uh, he's got a channel called Toby Games, where he does the same thing. He has himself on camera in most of the videos. Um, and other people like, uh, like C-Nanners, um, I don't think C-Nanners used to do it, but it seems like lately he's gotten into this habit of, um, of doing it as well. So you have all these very popular people on YouTube, all these, uh, some of these people are, you know, like, in the millions of subscribers, they have a lot of people watching their videos, and they're kind of known for that. Uh, they put themselves on camera as they're playing the game. And so, um... If you want to do that, again, you can. Uh, it just seems, to, to me personally, it seems like something that detracts from the game. But again, it depends on what kind of game you're playing and what kind of video you're making. Uh, in PewDiePie's case, pr particularly, I think one of the reasons why he likes to have himself on camera is because he is known for playing a lot of horror games. He plays a lot of very scary games. He plays a lot of games with jump scares. And... Um, a lot of the fun for, you know, for that kind of thing, for watching somebody play that kind of thing, is in watching him get scared. For the viewers, a big part of the fun is in watching him freak out every time something scary happens, which of course you couldn't see if he's not on camera. So if that's a big focus of what you're doing, if a big focus is, you know, your reactions, like your facial reactions or something like that, then, okay, yes, then that's then it's not about the game, it's about you as a player. And that, you know, again, that's that's about the let's play thing. Are you making a careful playthrough of the game where you want to kind of show off everything about the game? Or is it more like, let's play. Let's play this game and have fun and get freaked out and, you know, get drunk and have a few beers and get, have a party and let's all get really rowdy while we're playing this game. So it all depends on who you are and your particular personality uh, what kind of game you're playing, and what kind of video you want to make. For me personally, I mean, I'm not shy about appearing on camera. I've put myself on camera a few times, of course, but um, it's just not the focus for me. I don't want myself to be the star of the video. The point, the reason why I'm making most of these videos on this channel is to highlight the games themselves. And so for me, it's not appropriate for me to put myself on camera while I'm playing a game. Um, if I was playing a game with a lot of jump scares where I wanted to show myself getting freaked out, then yeah, that'd be something different. But for me and the kind of videos I make, no, I don't want to put myself on camera. I don't think that's appropriate. But if you want to do that, you can. Um, but you should probably ask yourself why you want to show yourself on camera. Are you, you know, do you want to attract attention to yourself? Which is not, not bad per se. I mean, if, if you want to kind of show yourself off, then okay, you can do that, but you, then you should understand that you're not making the video for the game, you're making it for yourself. You kind of want to um, put yourself on camera and kind of be the star of the show. And if you want to do that, then okay, sure, it's it's YouTube, right? It's YouTube. You can put yourself on the on the tube. 
it's, uh, it's your choice to do so. Um, but you are going to get a lot of um, a lot of comments and people kind of criticizing you for that if it's not something that um, if it's not something that naturally suits the video. Even if it is something that naturally suits the video, I mean, PewDiePie gets a lot of hate comments. A lot of people hate PewDiePie uh, because they kind of see him as a uh, as a narcissistic jerk. Um, I don't think he's a jerk. I mean, he seems to be actually a pretty uh, pretty down to earth guy. Uh, I don't think that he's let fame go to his head too much, but still, some people think that it's really stupid to do what he does, and, well, maybe it is. Who knows? That's a matter of opinion, right? So, so you know, everybody's got their own opinions on, on everything, and um, so, yeah. If you really think that it's appropriate, or if you just really want to put yourself on camera and show yourself during the video, then, okay, sure, why not? You can do that. But um, take a moment to ask yourself why you're doing that, and is it really appropriate? Is it really something that goes well with the game and with your gameplay style and the kind of video that you're making. So, I think that's all. Uh, these are... I think these... I mean, there are other things as well to consider, uh, depending on, again, the game and the video, but uh, I think these are the big things, like the main key points that I've seen come up again and again uh, when people are planning or people are talking about making a Let's Play video. Um, and none of these, I want to stress that, uh, let me see, is there an exception? Um, yeah, there's not a single exception here. Not one of these is a hard and fast rule. Every single one of these is not a yes or a no. It's a maybe. It's something that you will need to consider when you are planning the video, and while you're making the video, you'll want to keep it in mind. If you've decided to do all the voice commentary, then that's your decision, but you should uh, try to stick to that to, you know, to the greatest extent possible, as much as is practical and as much as is reasonable. Of course, there are exceptions, and like I said, you'll have to exercise some judgment and some artistic license when you're making the video, and, again, editing the video, if you, if you do edit your videos, because that's, uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's, it's, about um, it's about having fun, because games should be fun, and your videos should be fun, um, and they should be informative. If you're, uh, if you're making a video about a game, I think that you should um, kind of communicate something about what the game is like and what it's like to play the game. And so, at the end of the day, your videos, uh, you'll, you'll need to make the right decisions for your videos about how to make them the most fun, the most enjoyable to watch for your viewers, and of course the most fun to make for yourself because you should be having fun while you're making and playing the games as well, while you're making the videos and playing the games, and how to make them informative so that people can kind of take something from the videos and kind of enjoy the experience and sort of uh, maybe even learn something about about the uh, about the game or or something else. So do what's right for for your videos and for your viewers to you know to help everybody have the most fun and get the most out of the experience. And that's going to mean making some decisions. All of these are decisions that you will want to make and that you'll want to consider while you're putting together your videos. If in fact you do make videos on YouTube. And a lot of this, of course, applies not only for gaming videos, but just for videos in general, although most of the points here are fairly gaming-specific. But um, I guess a lot of these can apply not only to games, but to other stuff as well. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I'm getting very close to an hour, so I hope that um, it has not been too tedious. If If you are still watching. Thank you for sitting through an hour of me just talking over a, uh, a screen of notepad with some sparse words in it. I hope that this has been interesting and informative. I hope that it has been enjoyable, and I hope that some folks have gotten some good, uh, some good ideas and perhaps some inspiration from what I've talked about today. So thank you for watching, everyone, and for those of you who make Let's Play videos, thank you, thank you, thank you for the entertainment and the uh, enrichment that you bring to all of us with your uh, with your contributions to um, to the gaming community and to the let's play community because uh, because we are we are a team we are a community of people who love games and love making videos about games so thanks to all my fellow let's players for all that you do 
and uh, I hope that we continue to have fun with it going into the future. Thank you, everyone, and I will talk to you folks later. Bye-bye for now.